Hey, this is Elijah with the Oxygen Team, and in today's video, we're gonna take a look at how to reproduce this sliding image gallery effect on your Oxygen site. As you can see, we have some images here, two rows actually, and as we scroll down, one kind of moves off to the left and one slides off to the right. So that's what we're going to be working on today. And fair warning, this will involve some custom JavaScript. So let's go ahead and close out that example site and let's jump into Oxygen and get started. First, we need a section to give us some room to scroll. So we're going to add a section and we'll add a heading here and we'll say scroll down. Let's increase the font size a bit and add an icon below that and we'll look for a down arrow on this one. Perfect, now let's center everything and then let's add a bunch of bottom padding to give us room to scroll. Now we'll duplicate this section and get rid of the arrow here, so we'll delete that and then we'll just say magic. This will be here below our sliding images. So now what we need to do is add a div. This div is gonna be the container for our sliding images, and we don't want it in the section, so let's move it on out of there, minimize these, and move our top section up. Now we have our div here, and we're ready for a couple of rows of images. So let's go ahead and add another div. Now these are gonna be set to horizontal, and we're not gonna allow multi-line because we actually want them to overflow off the screen, but we are gonna set a gap of something like 32 pixels. And now let's add some image elements here. Drop in an image and let's browse for something we have uploaded. Let's choose this one. And we'll just use duplicates of this for now. But we do wanna change the image size to maybe medium. Now let's duplicate that a few times. And what we're gonna see here is that it's gonna to start to overflow off the screen. The number of duplicates you're gonna need or the number of images you're gonna need will vary depending on your design, but we're just gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six for now. We may need to add a few more later. We're also gonna fix this overflow on the front end. So we'll only see it on the back end when we're designing this page. Now let's go into our div. Let's go ahead and rename this. We'll call it magic because that's where we're gonna be working on creating the sliding magic. Now we're also gonna need a transition on this. That's because we're gonna be using CSS transforms to move it and we want that movement to be smooth. So we're gonna to go to advanced effects, transition, and set the transition duration to 0.3 seconds, timing function to linear, that's important, and the CSS property to transform. And then on this top one, we're just gonna add some bottom margin to it to give some space between it and the next row. Now let's just duplicate this, and now we have our two rows. Let's remove the bottom margin on the bottom one, and then this bottom one is gonna be scrolling to the right, so it needs to start in a slightly different position. And I think the best way to do this is to use a negative percentage left margin. So we could do like negative 50%, which will give us room to scroll this over to the right. And again, your design might vary, so you might wanna tweak this or even do it differently, but this is how I found worked for this particular setup. So let's save everything, and now we can jump into the code. So we'll select our magic div, and we'll add a code block element. And we're gonna get rid of the PHP and HTML with a comment there, and then we're gonna go into the CSS because we only have one little bit of CSS that we need to do. First, let's grab the ID of our magic div. This is really the only selector we need, and you could use a class instead. I'm just using the ID in this case. Now, what we need to do is we need to add a selector of body colon not dot ng dash scope. So this is gonna look for body elements that don't have the class of ng dash scope which means it's only gonna find the body element on the front end because in the back end, in the oxygen, the body has the ng-scope class. So we're basically excluding the builder environment from this CSS. And then we're gonna target our magic div and we're gonna say overflow hidden. So what this does is this allows us to have the overflow in the builder so that we can see our images and design our layout. But on the front end, you're gonna see that we can't scroll to the left and right. That's because overflow is hidden. And you can already see here, we're probably gonna to have to adjust the number of images in our divs here, no big deal. 
Let's go ahead and do that real quick before we get too deep into code. So let's add say two more to each row. These could also be added dynamically. You could probably implement this kind of a setup with a repeater, but that gets a little bit more in the weeds than we want to today. So let's go back to our code block now that we've added a few images. We've done our PHP and HTML, which was just a comment, and we've done our CSS, which was just a simple rule to avoid overflow on the front end. Now we get into the nitty gritty, which is the JavaScript. Now we're gonna need two functions that are really just utilitarian functions. One is gonna be a vanilla JavaScript way of making sure the document's loaded before we do anything. So the way we do that is we say var ready equals callback, this is gonna be an arrow function, and then we check if document dot ready state does not equal loading, and we do our callback. Now note, I am typing all of this, so there's likely to be a typo here or there, so we may have some errors on the front end that we have to resolve, but that's okay, that's all part of writing code. Now we're gonna do an else document dot add event listener dom content loaded, callback. So this basically sets up the functions that we want to run when the document is ready and says, hey, once everything's loaded, let's go ahead and fire this stuff. Now we're going to call ready and we're going to use an arrow function within that and we're going to start doing our stuff within here. But first we need one other utility function which is going to be a throttle function because we're going to be doing stuff based on the scroll position and that updates so many times you're going to end up flooding everything if you're just not throttling those calls at all. So what I like to do is set up a simple throttle function. So we'll call function throttle and it accepts a callback and a limit. And we're gonna set a variable waiting equals false. And then we're gonna do return function. And we're gonna check if we're not waiting, then we're gonna do this stuff. So what we wanna do is say callback.apply this.arguments. Then we're gonna set waiting to true. Then we're gonna use a timeout, set timeout function waiting equals false. And we're gonna fire that after our limit, which is a number of milliseconds. So unless I've created a typo here, let's apply the code, no red errors yelling at me, we should be good to start doing stuff. So within our ready function here, what we wanna do first is check if window.angular, and if that's true, we wanna return because that means we're in the builder and we don't wanna run any of this code. Then we're gonna add an event listener for the scroll event. So we're gonna go document.add event listener, scroll, and then we're gonna call our throttle function. So throttle, and then within that, we wanna tell it which function we want it to fire, which is gonna be called scroll action. We haven't created that yet, but we will next. And then we're gonna set a limit of 10 milliseconds. This means it's still going to fire very quickly, but we're gonna throttle it to a reasonable amount and it shouldn't cause any performance issues in the browser. So let's apply code, check for errors, everything's good. Now the real magic happens within our scroll action function, but it is actually surprisingly simple. So what we're gonna do is say function scroll action, make sure we get the name right there, and then we're gonna set up some variables. So we're gonna say let container equal document dot query selector, and now we're gonna paste in that ID of our container. Then we're gonna say let first row, which this is gonna be our first row of images. And the way we're gonna select that is selector, which just looks within the container, which is that div with the ID we pasted, for an element that matches the selector we pass. So we're gonna say div first child, because it's gonna be the first div in that container. Perfect. Now for the second row, we can use similar logic. We'll do let second row equal container dot query selector div last child. Since there are only ever two divs in this, this will select all the rows we need and allow us to manipulate them. Note that if you change the configuration, you'll definitely have to update this code, but for the layout and the setup that we have here, this is gonna work perfectly. Now, all we need to do is 
transform these divs, the first row and the second row, based on the scroll position, which is very, very easy to do. So we're gonna say first row dot style dot transform. This is the way you access CSS styles in JavaScript, or at least one of the ways you can access CSS styles in JavaScript. And we're gonna set that to equal a string, which is gonna be whatever we would normally type for the CSS. But in this case, we're gonna do something very important. We're gonna use the back tick instead of a quote, either a single quote or a double quote, because we wanna concatenate some JavaScript values into these strings. So we're using these back ticks, which are on the tilde key. If you don't press shift and you press the tilde key, you're gonna get a back tick. And this can wrap our string just like quotes normally would, but it'll allow us to do something special here. So we're gonna say translate X, and this is the one we wanna have moving to the left. So we'll say negative, and then we're gonna use a dollar sign and an opening and closing curly brace. And then outside that, we're gonna say pixels or PX, and then close our parentheses here. So what that's gonna do is let us insert a JavaScript variable or value inside these curly braces. In this case, we want something called this.scrolly, which is the up and down scroll position on the page. And you can see here, it even gives us some helpful highlighting to let us know that the stuff within these curly braces is kind of special. Now, we need to just do the same thing for the second row. So we'll copy and paste that code. We'll change first to second. And then we're going to remove this negative symbol on the translate x value because we want it to move to the right. So we need a positive value. Now, if we apply the code, we should get no errors. And if we save and jump up to the front end, we should be able to see our effect in action. So let's refresh and let's scroll down. And you can see that the top one is moving as expected, but we have an issue on the bottom one. First, let's check our browser console for any errors. None there. So more than likely what we have is a selector issue. So let's jump back here and see what we have. One of the best ways to troubleshoot these types of errors is to console log some stuff. So let's do console.log second row. We're gonna log this variable on the front end and see what it actually is. So let's open up our dev tools, go to our console, and now when we reload the page and scroll, we should see what's being logged. There we go, that's the issue, right? This is showing us which element is being stored in the second row variable. And guess what? It's the incorrect element. And that's because we added the code block inside of our magic div. And as I said earlier, this magic div really only needs to contain two div elements. If it doesn't, it's gonna break our selectors. So an easy fix for this is just to move the code block and that's going to resolve our problems. But before we jump up to the front end, let's get rid of our console log so it's not spitting out a bunch of garbage when we scroll. Now let's save, and now we'll have our magic moment, which we expected a few minutes ago, but we didn't quite get. If we scroll down, the top one moves to the left, the bottom one moves to the right, it's nice and smooth, and we have enough images that you don't start running out until you're almost past the element. So again, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and that's how to achieve this cool opposite sliding image gallery effect in Oxygen. Thank you very much for watching.